What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here. Today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to clean up your Shark Rotator bagless separate vacuum. Mine is model number NV500, so be sure to refer to your model number or the appearance of the machine in order to see if this tutorial is applicable for your machine. Now, this particular machine comes in blue and red, possibly other colors. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to clean up the brush roller area, clean up the brush roll so there's no hair on it. I'm going to show you how to change the filters, and on my particular unit, the wand and the hose need replaced, so I'll show you how to change those as well. Uh, with All of this is super easy and stuff that you can very easily do yourself without having to take it to a shop or anything like that, uh, with the hardest part being the brush roller if there is a more widespread issue. So hopefully you'll find this helpful. We're going to start out with cleaning up the brush roller. So this brush roller does come off. This is a lift away model after all. So if we look up here on the top, there's a button right here that says lift away. We press that and that allows the motor assembly to pop off. It's got this weird obnoxious base. So, this does appear to be the older unit that is held in place by Phillips head screws. Uh, most of these machines that you buy nowadays are going to be held in by Torx security bit screws, so those are not able to be opened by the customer. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be opening up this little cavity right here, uh, just checking in for clogs and anything like that, and I'll also show you how to clean off this brush roll. It's pretty simple. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check for any sort of clogs. So we're just going to take a coin, it can be a nickel, a quarter, anything like that, and we're just going to turn both of these little catches a quarter turn, and that will allow this little section to lift up. Just like that. Ooh. And we do have some debris in here, so it's good that we check that. So we're going to need to clear this out somehow. We also want to check this hose for any splits. If this little hose right here has splits, then you're going to need to replace your power head. Uh, Shark does not provide the hose by itself. So if you have a clog or anything like that, or, or not a clog, but if you have a split in this lower hose, then you'll just need to replace the vacuum. It's just the way that Shark designed it. Parts are not available for these machines. Shark designs these machines to be disposable and does not make parts available unless you are willing to buy entire whole assemblies, like in this case, the entire cleaner head. So if your brush roll is not spinning, or if you have any issues with this hose, or the housing, or if any of the plastic breaks, you just have to replace this entire cleaner head as one whole unit. If I can find links to replacement cleaner heads, I will link them in the description. If not, then, or if Shark does not make them available anymore, then unfortunately, you're pretty much at the mercy of Shark, and you're just going to have to figure out some sort of replacement elsewhere. So, we are going to just clean this out a little bit. If you have another vacuum, this will make this a lot easier. So, I'm just going to look down here and see. Okay, so that is clear. Okay. So it doesn't look perfect, but I've at least got the majority of the debris out. So now we've got that, we can seal this back up and lock both of these tabs. Both of these tabs should be parallel with the brush roller, and that's when you know it's all in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take a knife or a blade. You want to be very careful with this because I have cut myself before. In fact, here's the scar to prove it on one of these brush rollers. These are not designed to be cleaned, so you're just going to have to, have to very carefully cut off this hair. Again, you don't you don't want to have any sort of you know pressure applied to this. You don't want to be going really hard at this because you could slip and cut yourself. This is a potential safety hazard after all. So you want to make sure to pull out as much hair by hand as you can. A lot of the hair will get stuck in the bristles. Just like that. 
And I, I, now, there are ingest bars right here, so I kind of recommend doing it one section at a time. So in this case, I'm doing this section. And once I've got all the hair, oh, almost messed up the brush roll, and that could have ended badly. <laughs> so now we're going to do the middle section. Now again, we don't want to scratch the brush roller. We just want to kind of slide the knife gently underneath the hair. Again, very gentle sawing motion. We do not want to have any kind of pressure. We do not want to risk stabbing ourselves, as that would be very bad. Again, we're seeing a lot of hair pull off in this brush roller. Now, this vacuum was originally made back before Shark had any sort of anti-tangle technology. And now, pretty much every vacuum company had the vacuums available that have anti-tangle brushes. That includes Bissell, Dyson, and of course Shark. With in my experience, Dyson's version being the most practical. So there are newer machines that don't have this problem anymore. But of course, if you're watching this video, you've already bought this machine and you need to know how to clean it. And hopefully this is showing you how to do it. So Again, you want to get all the hair out, all the strings, any dental floss, any clothing tags from shirts, whatever could theoretically get caught in brush rollers. I've seen it all. I've been fixing vacuums since 2005. So believe me, I have seen it all. So we're just going to, again, slide this very gently. Again, it's a cutting motion. We're not stabbing it. No pressure or anything like that. We do not want to slip and risk cutting ourselves. I am not liable if you injure yourself. So just please, please be careful with this. If you're not very good with knives, then perhaps get someone else in your family who is better with cutlery to do this for you. Or just get a new bag. But that's obviously a lot more wasteful of a solution than simply fixing the one that you currently have, which is why I'm making this video. Because anyone can tell you to throw it away and buy another one, and anyone can easily take money from you in order to fix it uh, themselves, but very few people will actually show you how to fix it yourself so that way you don't have to spend the money in the first place, which is why I made this video. So as we can see, we've got pretty much most of the hair, in fact, just about all of the hair, off of this brush roll. You can see the brush roll is stained from all the dust, but as far as the actual hair being on the bristles, we can see the results right there are pretty good. Oh, please don't tell me that this was out of frame this entire time. Uh, it would not believe, I, w I would definitely, certainly believe my luck if that was the case. Hopefully you could see what I was doing. Obviously I can't exactly recreate this. I guess I could second all this hair again and redo this, but hopefully you saw that. So, that is that. Now our brush roller is cleaned up. And look at all the nastiness that we pulled out. Isn't that yucky? Ooh, uh, it's not smell good. So, now we've got all this hair off to the side. We don't need our coin anymore. Everything else we can do is very self-explanatory. So, ooh, there's hair on the inside of this as well. And clearly the household that had this machine was way too demanding for it. But in this machine's defense, it does still work, kind of. So now we're going to put this in the upright position so this base is flat now. That is that. Now I'm going to go ahead and clean up this hair. Now this is not the ideal machine to clean this up, but I don't have anything plugged in right now. And I just clogged it. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess that's another video. So, now that we've got all the hair off of this, we can take the main pod of the machine and click it right back on, just like that. So, 
Next, I'm gonna show you how to replace the wand and the handle on this machine. So I did get a replacement wand and a handle direct from Shark. I've already removed the old wand and handle, but I will show you how to remove it again. So I'm gonna grab my two replacement parts, which in this case is a handle and a wand. So, figuring out how to open this. So, first step is the wand. Now, installing this is incredibly self-explanatory. I'll turn the clip up to the upright position. Where we see this little tab right here, it's going to line up right back here in the back of the machine. I don't know if you can see that. So we're just going to line this up right there and push it in place until it clicks. I don't know if you heard that click, but if you heard that click, now the wand is in place. And to remove the wand, there's a button right here that says wand. You push it, and that allows the wand to pull out. So, it doesn't always click into place on the first try. So sometimes you have to wiggle it, and there we go. Now it's locked in. So now we've replaced the wand, and in my case it does match in the blue color. Now, for some reason, they gave me a hose with a red color, so it's not going to match, but it will work. So, we're going to take a replacement hose out of the package. It's being more difficult than I anticipated. Just going to let it fall out. There we go. So here's our handle. We have a suction control right here. So if you want to bleed off suction for more delicate surfaces, you can slide this over to minimum. Slide it over to maximum. That completely closes off this valve and all the suction goes out the end. So. so it appears on this machine that I actually need the piece that I had previously uh, had attached to the old hose. So I'm gonna have to go grab that and show you. So for reference, here is the hose and wand that I'm replacing on this unit. The reason why I'm replacing both of these is because the handle and the wand are stuck together. So I don't have any way to remove these for some reason. And also the hose is torn. So when you go to remove the hose from your machine, before you've done anything to it, it'll look like this. It'll be attached right here with this little elbow right here. And we press this blue button, and it may be red on your model, but we press this blue button, and that makes this pop out. So now, as we can see, the new hose doesn't have this elbow piece attached to it, so we need to remove this elbow piece to reuse it. So you can see this side's already come unclipped. I'll show you. Unclip one side, and you unclip the other side and it should just pop right out. There we go. So now we've removed this elbow piece. So now we're gonna take our new hose. We're going to attach it right here and push it into place until both tabs click into place just like this. And now that we've done that, we can slide this curved piece into this valve right here line it up with this little tab. See this little tab right here? So we're gonna line this up and push it down until it clicks into place. Ow! Ooh! The shark just bit me. Oh! So, now that that is clicked into place, we can see it moves up and down just fine, and that's what we want. We want it to move freely. So now that we've done that, it may have to swivel out of the way. Now that we've done that, we can take this and clip it right into the top, and we could hear that satisfying click. So that works. For some reason, there's a weird little clip right here, but there's no clip on the hose. And now it doesn't fit in the proper clip because this weird clip is in the way. So I guess Shark changed the design of this. That's kind of stupid. 
but whatever. So then we can push this hose into the clip right here. And now our shark has a new wand and a new handle. So much better. So now the hose is perfectly clear. It's not split. And I can very easily press this button right on the back and remove the handle for the hand tools. And click it back into place. So that is that. So finally, the last thing I'm going to show you is changing the filters. So, one thing that I do like about sharks, one of the few things I like about sharks, is the filters are incredibly cheap. I got a pack of filters, an entire set for this machine for only $7. So I got a set of the pre-motor sponge and felt filters, a HEPA filter, which is the full set that we need, and a spare set of the washable filters. I got all this for $7, so that's great. So the spare set of the washable filters, you only need one of these, so if you bought a pack that has two, toss that aside, keep that in your closet so whenever you're washing these filters, you can swap those in so you always have your vacuum ready. And I recommend washing these filters every month. Uh, sometimes sooner if you use this machine a lot or if you're dealing with a lot of fine dust, then you may need to, em to clean this filter every time you empty the bin. At least check the filter every time you empty the bin, which you see it when you pull the bin off anyway, so that's easy. And even if you wash this as often as you're supposed to, I still recommend changing this about every year because these filters do deteriorate when you wash them. And this HEPA filter, they say it's washable, it's not. These filters break down when you wash them and you can never get these completely clean, so these you have to change. You change this filter about every year. So if you're keeping track, you wash this filter every time you empty the bin, both, both of these filters, but mainly this filter. And then regardless, you buy a set of these every year. So it's a lot of maintenance for this machine. This machine does require a lot of filter maintenance and a lot of brushful maintenance, but that's what happens when you buy a shark. So, what we're going to do is we're going to press this button right up here. This is the dust cap release. It's a little trigger right here. We just push that out of the way, and that allows us to release the dust cup. So, now that we remove the dust cup, we need to grab this little piece right here. This is what holds our filters in place. Now, I've already trashed my old set of filters because my old set of filters were too far gone. There was nothing that could be done about them. They were just completely trashed. They were falling apart. So, we're going to unwrap our new filters. So if you're changing these filters, there's going to be this filter on top of here and this filter underneath. We're going to ch ch check both of those and chuck them. So the first thing we do is this little filter goes down in here. So you can see that filter goes right down in there. It, you want the tab to be facing out no matter which way you put it, there is a tab. Just make sure that if you put it in a certain way that you don't put it in the opposite way because the dirt that's on that side will get sucked into the motor. So be sure to pick a side and stick to it. This just pops right in down here and you push it in all the way until it's flush. Just like that, I get, it's dirty on the inside, I tried cleaning it. And now we take this filter right here and we slide it over this cone piece. If you don't have this cone piece, then buy one because you need it. If you lost it somehow, you want to take this foam and slide it over the top of it. Just like that, you slide it all the way down until it does not go on any further. And then you take this and drop it right in there. Push it down until it's flush and that'll do that. For some reason on this particular unit, it's a bit loose in there, but that's just how it is. So, we've replaced both of the pre-motor filters, so now we can take our dust cup, make sure to empty this while you're here, make sure the screen is clear of any debris, and make sure that these clips are good too. If these clips break, then you're going to need to change this bin. Pop the bin back on, and finally, we're going to change the HEPA filter. So we press this little tab right here, the filter door pops off. If you have a filter in here, throw it away. We're going to open up this HEPA. up. 
Again, unwrapping these filters is going to take you more time than installing it. Now, to install this filter, it's very difficult. Don't blink, you'll miss it. Boom, right in there. It sits in there flush. Nice little handle to pull it out for when you need to change it. Pop in there right there. Slide this on. Make sure to line up these two notches right down here. And push that in until it locks into place. So, that's it. Now you have successfully changed the filters on your Shark Rotator MV500. If you watch this tutorial all the way through, then you've also learned how to clean up your brush roller, how to check the base for clogs, and how to remove and replace both the wand and the hose. Now, if you still are experiencing loss of suction, there probably is a clog somewhere else in the machine. There probably is a clog in the wand or in the hose, or potentially in this pipe right here. So the best thing to do is to drop a penny down any of these orifices that you're trying to check for clogs. And if the penny falls out, you know it's not clogged. If the penny is stuck in there, then you're gonna to need to take a very thin broom handle and push it through the wand or the hose or whatever aspect of the vacuum is clogged. And if the vacuum is, is blocked in an area where it's hard plastic, then you can take something like a metal coat hanger and basically curve the tip of it and put it in and try to fish out whatever the clog is. So once you do all that, you should be able to unblock every airway on your shark. And if you've cleaned up the brush roll and changed your filters and made sure there's no clogs in your machine, then your machine should be working at tip top shape. If for whatever reason it still isn't, or if you're having a burning smell or some other weird electrical issue with your shark, then you're gonna to need to call the shark company because at that point you'll probably need a replacement part or potentially even an entire replacement vacuum. So, unfortunately these machines are not really built to last, but with these tips, you can hopefully keep your machine running as long as possible and prevent it from dying a potential early death. So anyways, this is Intellitech Studios signing out with my full tutorial on how to change the filters, how to replace some of the components, and how to clean up the brush roller on your Shark Rotator power, or not powered, your Shark Rotator non-powered lift away, NV500. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you all have a good one. Peace. If you have any questions, if there's anything that I missed, or you're still having problems with your machine, be sure to drop it in the comments below, and I can either help you fix it, or point you in the right direction. So, hopefully that helped, and again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hope you all have a good one. Peace.